Philippine resistance. The story of the Philippine resistance resisting Japanese authority stands out as an unparalleled act of bravery and tenacity in the vast tapestry of World War II. Amidst the turmoil of the Pacific conflict, an underground movement in the Philippines rose to challenge the invaders. This video aims to shed light on the guerrilla activities that defied the might of the Japanese army, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Filipino people. We will explore the formation, operations, and impact of these resistance groups, illuminating a significant yet often overshadowed aspect of World War II history. So, let's take a trip back in time to the 1940s, to a period of occupation and war, and to the heroes who dared to resist. Without knowing the background of the Philippine resistance, its tale cannot be properly grasped. In December 1941, Shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan turned its sights on the Philippines, a US Commonwealth at the time. The strategic location of the archipelago made it a prime target, offering control over vital sea routes and a stepping stone toward the ultimate goal of Japanese expansion in the Pacific. The initial defense of the Philippines was a combined effort of Filipino and American troops under the command of General Douglas MacArthur. Despite their valiant efforts, the defenders were overwhelmed by the superior numbers and resources of the Japanese forces. The fall of Bataan in April 1942, followed by the surrender of Koregijo a month later, marked the beginning of Japanese occupation. The occupation was marked by strict military rule economic hardship and widespread atrocities. The Japanese aimed to incorporate the Philippines into the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, an economic and political bloc intended to establish Japanese dominance in the region. However, their oppressive policies and brutal treatment of the local population fueled resentment and resistance. It was in this environment of adversity and oppression that the seeds of resistance were sown. Ordinary Filipinos, soldiers and local leaders alike were united by a common purpose, to resist the invaders and reclaim their homeland. This shared resolve gave birth to numerous resistance movements across the archipelago, setting the stage for a protracted and bitter struggle for freedom. Without a doubt, the emergence of the Philippine resistance showcased the remarkable grit and resolve of the Filipino people. Following the fall of Bataan and Corregidor, many soldiers refused to surrender and instead retreated into the mountains and jungles, forming the nucleus of the resistance movement. They were joined by civilians, outraged by the atrocities committed by Japanese forces, creating a diverse coalition united by a common goal to resist the occupation and fight for their freedom. Among the most prominent of these groups was the Hukbalaha or the Hukbong Bayan Leban Sa Hopon, the People's Army Against the Japanese. Formed in central Luzon, the Hukbalaha was primarily composed of peasant farmers and was initially led by Louis Taruk. The group carried out guerrilla warfare against the Japanese forces, disrupting supply lines and launching attacks on Japanese installations. Another significant resistance group was Marking's Guerrillas, led by Marcos Villa Agustin, better known as Marking. This group was active in Rizal and Laguna provinces and was known for their daring raids on Japanese camps. They also provided valuable intelligence to the Allied forces. In Visayas and Mindanao, other resistance groups emerged, such as the Free Panay Guerrilla Forces and the Mindanao Guerrilla Resistance Movement. These groups carried out similar activities, disrupting Japanese operations and gathering intelligence. The United States played a crucial role in supporting these resistance movements. General MacArthur, who had been ordered to leave the Philippines before the fall of Bataan, made a promise to return. 
From Australia, he coordinated with the resistance, providing them with supplies, training and intelligence. This support was instrumental in sustaining their resistance and keeping the spirit of defiance alive throughout the occupation. The formation of the Philippine resistance was not a centralized or coordinated effort, but rather a spontaneous and organic response to the harsh realities of occupation. It was a movement born out of necessity, fueled by a deep-seated desire for freedom and a refusal to submit to the oppressor. The activities of the Philippine resistance were as diverse as the groups that composed it, ranging from sabotage and intelligence gathering to direct combat against Japanese forces. These actions were carried out with limited resources and under constant threat of discovery and reprisal, making their achievements all the more remarkable. One of the primary activities of the resistance was guerrilla warfare. Small, mobile groups of fighters would launch surprise attacks on Japanese forces and installations, disrupting their operations and sowing confusion. These attacks were often carried out at night or in difficult terrain, taking advantage of the guerrillas' intimate knowledge of the local environment. The Huk Balahap, for instance, was particularly effective in this regard, leveraging their familiarity with the rural landscapes of central Luzon to carry out successful operations against the Japanese. Sabotage was another key tactic employed by the resistance. This involved damaging infrastructure, such as bridges and railways, to hinder Japanese movement and supply lines. The resistance also targeted Japanese communication systems to disrupt their command and control capabilities. Intelligence gathering was a crucial aspect of the resistance's activities. Resistance fighters would collect information on Japanese troop movements, fortifications and plans, which was then relayed to the Allied forces. This intelligence played a vital role in planning the eventual return of General MacArthur and the liberation of the Philippines. Markings guerrillas, for example, were instrumental in providing intelligence to the Allies, including information that contributed to the successful Leyte landing in 1944. In addition to these military activities, the resistance also engaged in civic actions to support the local population. They organized relief operations to provide food and medical aid to those affected by the war. They also established makeshift schools to ensure the continuation of education for Filipino children during the occupation. Despite the constant threat of capture and the harsh conditions, the resistance fighters remained undeterred. They faced numerous challenges, including limited resources, internal conflicts, and the constant threat of infiltration by Japanese spies. Yet, they persevered, driven by their unwavering commitment to their cause. One notable operation was the raid on the Cabanatuan prison camp in January 1945, carried out by the US Army Rangers, Alamo Scouts, and Filipino guerrillas. This daring mission resulted in the rescue of over 500 Allied prisoners of war, demonstrating the effectiveness of the cooperation between the resistance and the Allied forces. The activities of the Philippine resistance were a testament to the courage, resourcefulness and resilience of the Filipino people. Despite the overwhelming odds, they managed to sustain a persistent campaign of resistance that significantly hampered Japanese operations and laid the groundwork for the eventual liberation of the Philippines. Moving forward, let's shift our focus to the significant outcomes and enduring legacy of the Philippine resistance. The influence of their actions rippled beyond the immediate conflict, etching a profound impact on the course of history. The Philippine resistance had a significant influence on how the Pacific theater of World War II played out. Through their relentless guerrilla warfare, sabotage and intelligence gathering, the resistance fighters significantly disrupted Japanese operations, diverting resources and attention away from other fronts. Their actions not only hampered the Japanese war effort, but also provided invaluable support to the Allied forces. 
The intelligence gathered by the resistance was instrumental in the planning and execution of General MacArthur's return to the Philippines in 1944. The detailed information on Japanese troop positions, fortifications and plans provided by the resistance enabled the Allies to carry out successful landings on Leyte and Luzon, marking the beginning of the end of the Japanese occupation. The resistance also played a crucial role in the liberation of Manila in 1945. Their knowledge of the city and its Japanese defences was invaluable in the urban warfare that ensued. Despite the heavy casualties, the resistance fighters fought alongside the American forces until the city was finally liberated. The resistance also had a significant psychological impact. The existence of these groups and their continued defiance of the Japanese occupation served as a beacon of hope for the Filipino people. It was a constant reminder that the spirit of freedom and independence remained alive, even in the face of oppression. Yet, the impact of the resistance came at a high cost. Thousands of resistance fighters and civilians lost their lives in the struggle. Many more were subjected to torture, imprisonment and other atrocities. The war left deep scars on the nation and its people, the effects of which are still felt today. In the aftermath of the war, the contributions of the resistance were recognized by the Philippine and American governments. Many resistance fighters were granted military status, making them eligible for veterans' benefits. However, the recognition process was fraught with difficulties and many legitimate fighters were denied recognition due to lack of documentation or other issues. The legacy of the Philippine resistance underscores the enduring narrative of a people's fight for freedom amidst formidable challenges. It serves as a poignant illustration of human resilience when confronted with oppressive forces. This narrative, marked by sacrifice and endurance, forms an integral part of history that warrants acknowledgement and remembrance. Amidst the challenges of occupation and hardship, the Philippine resistance during World War II exemplifies the unyielding spirit of the Filipino people in their struggle against Japanese rule. From the formation of diverse resistance groups across the archipelago to their relentless guerrilla warfare, sabotage and intelligence gathering, these brave individuals significantly disrupted Japanese operations and provided invaluable support to the Allied forces. Their actions, born out of a deep-seated desire for freedom, not only hampered the Japanese war effort, but also provided hope and support to the local population during a time of great hardship. The legacy of the Philippine resistance is a powerful reminder of the human capacity for resilience and defiance in the face of oppression. It is a story of heroism, sacrifice, and the enduring will to fight for freedom, a story that continues to resonate and inspire. Thank you for joining us on this journey through a pivotal chapter in World War II history. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. We value your thoughts and comments, so please share them below.